two is discharge relationships within a drainage basin. In order to understand this, you've got to have a pretty good grasp of part one, which is the drainage basin system. So I would encourage all students to make sure that they're 100% on the vocabulary in the drainage basin system, because I'm not gonna stop and explain that again. So we'll be moving pretty fast to, like through most of the vocabulary. Okay, so increasing and decreasing surface runoff. So what causes this to happen? Now remember surface runoff is faster than through flow, it's faster than groundwater flow. So the impact that surface runoff can have in the drainage basin is really, really significant. So when we're looking at this, we need to understand all these uh, factors and that helps us to understand all the movement uh, that happens after a precipitation event in the drainage basin. So the first one looking at it there, we have steep sided valley. So if it's a steep sided valley, this means that a lot of water can flow down very rapidly without giving it the chance to really infiltrate. Okay. Um, a gentle sided valley or a flat area is going to allow time for uh, some water to infiltrate. If it's still going, there's still more precipitation, it's still raining, then the water is going to be able to fall and it's going to sit there and kind of wait patiently to infiltrate into the soil so there'll be less runoff. Impermeable rock then, we talked about before, we mentioned that it is a rock that water cannot pass through or has a very hard time passing through its pores or its cracks. So it usually means that the water is going to flow over the top. So this is impermeable rock. Permeable rock is the opposite. Now rock, it's gonna be a little bit slow anyways, um, compared to say like soil, but if it's a permeable rock, the water can pass through it a lot easier and uh, therefore it's less likely we're gonna see surface runoff. Thin soils then can reach its maximum capacity very, very quickly. This means then that it won't be able to allow more water to infiltrate. It'll be saturated because it takes so long then for percolation to happen or through flow to happen. So because of this, the soil then is saturated and lots of overland flow will happen. Thick soils allow for more uh, percolation, infiltration, uh, sorry, and through flow through the soil layer without like a hard bedrock layer blocking it, for example, underneath it. Uh, urban areas then are impermeable surfaces. Generally, we think about concrete, slates on the roofs, all these types of things are designed to increase surface runoff so that we can push water out of the area and not absorb water into all the areas. Then rural areas will tend to have more soil, vegetation, uh, that type of stuff that will allow more infiltration. Vegetation will also have intercepted storage and will also have more evapotranspiration, which leaves room for more water to infiltrate. Saturated soils then, the same as thin soils. So if it's saturated soils and then it starts uh, to, to have some precipitation, it's not gonna have anywhere to go. So it's gonna go towards surface runoff very, very quickly. Unsaturated soils on the other side then will have pores, open space, and allow water to flow through it. Water table then, going back to that, the water table is the area that is saturated in the groundwater storage. It means that all the pores are occupied. So if there's a high water table, and even if we have something like permeable rock, it's gonna mean that there's less chance that the water's gonna have somewhere to go, and that it will become saturated maybe in the soil above it faster. A lower water table leaves more pore space within the rock where it can pass through. Now deforestation is a major impact in all parts of the course. So this is just another one of those uh, examples. In pretty much all the physical units, we talk about deforestation quite a lot. In with deforestation in regards to the drainage basin cycle and how it affects surface runoff, the main thing we're thinking about is uh, infiltration for sure. Because if we have trees and we have forests, we're going to see a decrease in surface runoff. We're going to see more intercepted storage. This means that the soil has more time to pass and to absorb water, right? So if it can do this, it means that it's not going to be saturated. So you have unsaturated soil due to the being forested. And this also means that you're just going to have a little bit more time and you're not going to have unsaturated soil because the vegetation is using the water. So the water that's in the area, a lot has been evaporated out as well. So this means that there's gaps and pores in the rock and the water table is a bit lower. On the other side, if we take that forest away and we clear it through deforestation, we're going to see that the soil is very exposed um, and it will reach its maximum capacity very, very quickly and will become saturated. We could also see that a lot of surface runoff 
in a deforest areas causes thinner soils, which again is another factor that we would relate back to increasing surface runoff. Okay, so a storm hydrograph. I hope that helped. If you want to continue learning, the rest of the course is below in our link. Um, you can sign up and learn there through all these videos. There's over 10 hours of videos of the content. Um, and this teaches you everything about the case studies, the concepts in each section, and you can just take it at your own pace. Um, within each course, then you'll get a PDF printout, some short questions and a video that just discusses the different parts uh, of the course. So those are the full videos there and should give you all the information, oops, should give you all the information that you need throughout the course in order to successfully answer any exam questions. We also have a second course that's just dedicated to the exam paper skills where you learn what a good example is, what a bad example is, why different scores are awarded for different reasons, and it should be able to elevate your uh, ability to write these answers. It's also going to give you examples, so you've got like 80 example uh, exam paper questions to look at and to learn from, and to potentially use some of the information in that as you're going forward. So it's also a, a good way to learn too. Okay guys, if you like, please subscribe and let me know if you have any questions, and I'll be happy to answer them.